Welcome back to Sky Tower. This is Noah. This is Jesse. This is Marissa. Nice to have you back. Nice to be back. Week three of the Game of Thrones. <laughs> I can go all night. You can't. Um, <laughs> I will say that if you haven't seen any of our previous advertisements on Instagram, you gotta you gotta check those out. They're, oh snap! They are they are funny. I am pretty. Oh, so, so pretty. pretty. <laughs> I feel pretty and witty, and apparently we can't say that word anymore. So they're gonna have to change the song. I guess we'll do our shout outs. Uh, the uh, the restaurant review, the drawing, oh. and jump right into the scotch. So. Yeah. It's time for our shout outs. Any shout shout outs this week? Hmm. That's a no, probably. It's a long pause. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, you got any shout outs for your week? Uh, I mean, it's. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. Noah, what about your shout outs? I'm sure I have one. It's going to come to my mind anymore. I, there's nobody I really want to compliment. I don't think I really received any like great customer service this past Restaurant Well, we ventured to the old Chicago at uh, Parker and Arapahoe Road in, I believe that's Aurora, Colorado. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Interesting experience. Very. <laughs> <laughs> I remember before I left state and came back to uh, to Colorado, um, I used to think Old Chicago's was a, was a pretty decent restaurant, um, had good food and good service, good atmosphere and stuff like that. But it really seems that ever since I've uh, moved back here in uh, 2020 to now, it just um, maybe it's post COVID or something, but it just seems like it lacks uh, the uh, the ambiance. Uh, the food is uh, the pizza was pretty good that we had. I can't complain about the pizza. The salad was eh, and uh, the service and eh, I'm gonna like overall, it's just not what it used to be. All right, what kind of review do you have, Marissa? I mean, I think I went there knowing what I was going to get. I didn't go there for a five-star meal. The runs. Um, well, to, to be determined. But for right now, I'm feeling, you know, plugged and loved. Um, so. I, I'm going to have to think about that one. So. I, I think Not we, going there. I think I went there to get pizza. I think that's what we got. And I didn't think the pizza was bad. Um, the service. This may be something that is <laughs> post COVID or it, perhaps it's, it's possibly just restaurants alone, but I don't think so. I think that the work workforce is struggling. And I think, um, a lot of people have reduced their expectations or demands when they go out because they just like being able to go places again. And so that's sort of in tandem with the hiring circumstances. I think the help is not expected to, you know, think ahead, um, anticipate your needs, um, make suggestions. I mean, when I was a kid, granted, I'm not young, but when I was a kid waitressing, that was part of your job. Upsell. Do you want any drinks? Here's our top five beers tonight. Do you want... You know, what kind of salad would you like? Here's our dressings. And you didn't have to like dig for that information. Whereas for us, I thought the guy was almost drooling. And when we asked for salads, there was like a longer pause than necessary. Are and you saying he was a knuckle dragger? Well, it was just like Pulp Fiction when he's like, English motherfucker, do you speak it? Knuckles. <laughs> It, it was rough. It was rough. <laughs> I think I might have to bleep something out here. <laughs> no, nope. you gotta leave that in. Um, kind of leave Bring that out in. the game. <laughs> but we did. Like I said, I went there to get pizza. We went there to get beer. It wasn't like I went there expecting, you know, a valet and X Y Z. And ultimately, we did get that. But their menu is much smaller than I remember. To your point, Noah. Yeah. Like it seemed so much bigger last time. It really did. And I'll tell you what was <laughs> That's huge. What she said. <laughs> The cucumbers. Oh, they were huge. Yo, reduce the size of your cucumbers for cucumbers the love of God. <laughs> what? Oh, you got it a really was out, like kid. that. And yours was covered in nuts. <laughs> yeah, there were more nuts than I could fit in my mouth. That His is for sure. It was covered in nuts. It really was. It was I was like, rough. wow. And it was like, <clears throat> there were enough almonds on that thing to almond. milk. It was rough. Yeah. 
I, so what was your, <laughs> okay, I'm going off on a tangent. So <laughs> no, it's fine. It's a cool idea. It's great. So <laughs> for me, on the restaurant experience scale, we have here the first section, which is atmosphere. And on a scale of 1 to 10, it ranked a 2. And then we have food. Again, on a scale of 1 to 10, it ranked a 2. Service, on a scale of 1 to 10, it ranked a 2. Not that I think he was... Drooling? Uh, capable of doing more. It just wasn't what I had hoped for. And then the final end result, the guy with the big fat belly up here and the smile on his face or the run to the toilet, I once again give it a two. So I am uh, eagerly anticipating the end result, if you will. We'll see what happens. Don't forget about the table. Oh, yeah. The originally, when they put us in a table... <laughs> Don't rock the, the, the boat. <laughs> the table just spun. He just sat down there and was like, Psh. it was pretty. It cool. was like roulette. Yeah, yeah, it was. It's like, all right, all right. So let's like spin the table. Let's spin the uh, revolver wheel there. Throw it, slam it in, and then we spin the table and see who's going to shoot their head off. Uh, yeah. Furthermore, they are <laughs> do known not drink the, and drive, and do not play Russian roulette. <laughs> they're known for their beer flights, and you yeah. actually asked about this. And yeah, I did, and it was like you. I would have expected that there would have been like an Oktoberfest, since we're kind of like in the uh, September Octoberish time. But it was like this some like gridiron thing, and it ends on October third. I'm like, well, this is what September twenty seventh, twenty sixth, whatever it was. I'm like. Yeah, I ain't gonna drink fast. Yeah, drink fast. I'm not gonna do that mini, that little mini uh, flight. I didn't feel like the waiter even knew though, or was educated on what was actually no. happening. I don't think he knew. We had asked multiple times for about different types of beers. Um, he didn't even tell us that they were out of uh, certain types of toppings for the pizza. There was just there was a lot, but I still I'm not gonna look a gift horse in the mouth, and that is pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Here, here's the bottom line: I like pizza. The pizza it's, was even, even if it is post COVID and people are happy just to be going out, that does not mean we we should lower our expectations of what good service is. Right. Nor should we stop giving a decent tip or treat people poorly. We did not treat any of the individuals there poorly when they sat us at the spinning table or looked at us like we were crazy when we asked them if they had beer. So uh, yeah. Or only brought us one thing of silverware. Yeah, that was cool, too. Yeah. We were going to take turns and watch each other eat. Thank you. <laughs> Way to prolong the evening. Hey, we're going to make this last. So if you uh, <laughs> decide that you want to go to old Chicago's, um, we do not recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or like know what you're getting. Or just, yeah, or just be aware and know what you're getting. If you expect it to, you will get it. You will be 100% <laughs> right. Normally, we say like, hey, if you go to this place, let, let them know that you saw you heard about yeah, it on Scott. Don't let them know about Scotch Hour. <laughs> I mean, you can let them know, like, hey, uh, I did hear about you on Scotch Hour, but they gave you a really crappy review. Yeah, and, and it's the no run. fat solid. So but for they sure. gave us the runs. It's cool. <laughs> yeah, run for my money. <laughs> I would almost bet that any one of us, one of us three right here, could probably just pick up and ran with it tonight, and probably maybe do just as well, if not better. Better. I'm a fantastic waitress. No, I, I meant just making the food. <laughs> oh. Uh. Making the food or being the waiter. <laughs> yeah. I, or being the Carrot Top uh, host. Oh, yeah. That guy was a cool. I will give him a 10 for being a junior Carrot Top. <laughs> He's cool, man. He reminded me of the guy that runs the unicorn stand um, in the movie that has the minions. Oh, yeah. And he's like, knocked no over. Guy. The kid that's oh, yeah. running that stand. Yeah, he, he knocks that's the kid over in the whole thing. That's who stand. he reminded gotcha. me of. Yeah. Something me. Despicable, Despicable me. me. He's like running the concession stand. Okay. That's who our host looked like. He takes his first shot and it doesn't quite make it. And then he pulls out his blaster and blows the whole thing down. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. I like the better part when the guy's dog craps in his yard and he's like, sorry, that's what dogs do. Not when they're dead. <laughs> All right. So anything else, any more we want to beat this uh, dead horse with? We do not beat dead horses. No horses were injured during this show. Some horses asses. though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> All right. I don't um, think so. I think that's... he liked it. So are we good with the uh, two available options? Or are we just going to just kind of break all the rules together here? Uh, we have a uh, create your own sigil. Basically, uh, if that one gets drawn, then each one of us has to come up with a 
stipulation to create your own sigil slash house motto to go along with it. Um, the other one is uh, books that were books that were turned into movies that we liked or disliked or TV shows. Um, but um, we created those because originally we thought Brian would be here, and uh, he he's never seen Game of Thrones, but you have. So well, it's if, not true. He saw one episode. <laughs> Yeah, he's had one episode, and all he could talk about is a blonde head. The headlights. Head <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's like, I didn't know they had cars back then. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. All right, so, but if you want to, we could talk about a totally different subject. I'm willing to break the rules. Lights, blinding lights, I think. One headlight? <laughs> <laughs> One's better than none. <laughs> I'm happy to draw. Uh, that's actually your call, especially the sigil. Draw, I'm a little draw, bit. Draw, draw, draw. It's not in a hat, it's in a draw, bag, it's clean. Draw. It is the sigil. All right. Well, I tried. <laughs> Unless you really want to do the other one. Nah, man. We're good. Let's do this. I'm prepared. Okay. So um, what one thing has to be either in our All sigil right. or motto? What do you, what do you sigil got? Sigil or motto. So well, I'm going to think about this. So just to clarify, mm -hmm. um, sigil is... A code of arms. So the sigil would be kind of like the head of the... Of like the, a representative, the, yes. a visual representation. Right. So like with the uh, House Stark, it's the dire wolf. Mm -hmm. uh, for the uh, Lannisters, it's the head of the lion thing. Mm -hmm. And then... What in God's name is that? That's a golden rose or... I think it's supposed to be a golden rose, yeah. I mean, that looks like the center of the uh, monster that <laughs> takes down... Johnny Depp when he's playing uh, <laughs> the Kraken. <laughs> the Kraken, ah! which is also on one of these. Uh, or we can make it a coat of arms if we want. <laughs> if we want to be a little bit more in depth here, but um, but anyways, I think uh, our idea is like uh, we each have like a category that we have to um, we have to meet. So like uh, someone says like okay, you have to have something that relates to comic books, and then someone else might say okay, you have to have something that relates to maybe like. Uh, sports team, and then someone might have to say something relates to, I don't know, makeup. <laughs> Kiss my Anthea. <laughs> there you go. She's Just got kidding. it. Get ready for it, guys. So, All right. But I'm, yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I'm. All okay. right. While we're thinking about the answer for that and giving me time to decide what my motto and symbol See, will be. Well, we have to come up with like three three parts to that to to create it though. So. What uh, what do we? What are you saying that we have to include in our sigil? I'm gonna say an animal. An animal, okay. An animal. All right. What do we have to include? Do you like What's all your... animals? I do. What about snakes? Love them. <laughs> what about yeah. traps or snakes? I whip them and <laughs> cut their heads off. All right, do you common. have a? What's your stipulation here? I actually really wanted there to be some Latin. Latin, all right. I don't know Latin. Just pick well, your favorite Latin star. No, like words, you know, something that's old school that really gets yeah, to the point. I don't know Tempest enough Latin. I don't know any Latin. Mind. Tempest Fugit, yeah, it's in there. Caca. <laughs> Time flies. Fine. I'll, I'll, I'll try to come up with something in Latin of like using my phone here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. But keep it old school, man. Keep it old school. So we got animal. We got Latin. All right. And then my last piece here, something from an Adam Sandler movie. Adam Sandler movie. <laughs> yes. You know what I'm going to pick. Click. A midget. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know he had midgets in his movies. He did. <laughs> Happy Gilmore. <laughs> It was in his happy place. That uh, it suddenly really worries me that he found his special purpose and the midget was in his happy his place. Happy Scott, Scott, Scott. Scott. Place, not a special purpose. Dal Winnie, House Stark versus Kleinleash, House Tyrell. All right, which one of these are we going to start with? Uh, Stark. Nah, Kleinleash. Kleinleash it is. House Tyrell. All right, so while I'm opening this bad boy up, what do you remember from House Tyrell? What'd you love? What'd you hate? The grandmother, man. She was a badass. <laughs> she was. 
I mean, she was like, she helped uh, plot to kill uh, Joffrey. Uh, when uh, Jamie Lannister went to go kill her, she's like, yeah, just give me that poison. Yep, I killed your son. Screw you. I'm taking it. Boom. I'm out. Just like a total champ. Total champ. Oh, man. If she was my grandma, I don't know if I'd like that. I mean, their story, though, it wasn't, it wasn't cut and dry. The whole no. marriage to Joffrey mm. thing only happened after Ned Stark and his family were... Well, you, you also have to realize she was uh, the granddaughter, uh, Marjorie Tyrell. She was married before. She was going to marry uh, the gay Brathian brother mm -hmm. or homosexual. or I'm not even sure what's even okay to say anymore. <laughs> I don't know. It's PC. But in any case. Uh, Do you want ice? Uh, no, not in, this, not in the initial story. Oh. But um, he, uh, so... So she was gonna marry him, and she's like, "Yeah, I don't care if you sleep with my brother. That's cool." Yeah, you do you. But she did want him to sire a child. Yeah, to exactly. Like to cement that marriage, fortify the. Uh, but then they had a huge battle uh, there at uh, King's Landing, and then um, I forget. I oh no, Stannis had Stannis slept with the Red Witch, who had like some kind of crazy like fog like. Baby child uh, killing demon thing. Oh yeah! And went and uh, stabbed uh, his uh, younger his younger brother, killed the uh, whatever uh, suspicious circumstances. <laughs> Why is there a gray fog that just walked out of your nether region trying to kill me? <laughs> Not to be confused with netherland. So, <laughs> so then the youngest uh, uh, Baratheon was killed, mm -hmm. and so that left her being open now to marry anybody. So she got married to Joffrey, but then. Um, the grandmother killed uh, Joffrey there at the wedding. At the reception, man. Yeah, at the reception, yep. And then guess who they were trying to blame for it, though? Oh, Tyrion. Midget. The midget. <laughs> the Under amp. the scotch. <laughs> the amp. <laughs> the amp. I can tell you right now, after helicoptering my scotch well, oh, man, this has a good nose. And it also has 51 Point two percent alcohol by volume. That's in comparison to forty three. Is for it me, or does it seem like it's a little bit more on the honey gold side? It's definitely more on the honey gold side. It's not really that amber, dark amber. It singes the nostrils. But I smell the fruit. Yeah, I was gonna say I smell something. Some fruit forward. Fruit. Is it peach or what are you kind of smelling? Fruit fruit. Mango. Mango. I need to grill some mango. Real mango's good. Mm -hmm. Telegram from Mongo. See, and I'm actually getting vanilla. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some vanilla on there. I think that'll come out, especially in the taste in the oak. Not strong oak. Mm. Oh. Now, Noah did a little research, pointed out that this is used in Johnny Walker Gold. Yes. And that's what I just tasted. It's burning me. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you can definitely tell it has a higher alcohol content. Ooh, that's hot. Mm -hmm. The triple pour was not <laughs> such a good idea. I actually like the waxiness. That's because mm. it'll coat your throat and then you can't feel it anymore. <laughs> Jesse, please. <laughs> Go pull that out of the coffer. <laughs> <laughs> Coughing, coffer, we're, you know, almost to Halloween. Ooh, that'll take a bite out of you. Mm. <laughs> Remember when we discussed this? <laughs> Are you getting the shakes? <laughs> He's twitching over there. <laughs> That's got some kick. <laughs> like in the race, of course. Or like Last time I pretended to like start twitching and like doing whatever is like in second grade and I fell over backwards and Brian was sitting next to me in the lunchroom and he had a taco in his hand oh, no. and some way somehow because it's like those bench <laughs> tables I ended up falling sh straight through my foot never caught the table and kind of just like I fell perfectly and my foot <laughs> kicked <laughs> the taco kicked the taco out of his hand goes flying over like two tables or like taco crap flying out oh. of, of everyone and he gets in trouble. 
And that was the last <laughs> double date they ever went on. And not only did he get in trouble, he had to like stay in from uh, recess, and he had to pick up like pick up the whole like lunchroom and everything. And Sucker. I got to go out. And, and I got to go out and play. He, and you're looking yeah. through the window. <laughs> and he's trying to explain it to the teachers, and they're like, "There's no way that happened." All oh, right, right. You're trying to blame Noah. Be a man, Brian. Be a man. <laughs> <clears throat> um, that waxy flavor is where a little bit of malt comes out of the waxy feeling mm. on the tongue you let it sit there long enough it's almost like a heavy cream the malt you do definitely get a lot of that malt hmm huh. Not, um, no, I'm not getting any malt. Are you getting cherry vanilla? I, I almost thought I cherry. tasted banana, and <laughs> I'm like, mm. <laughs> could get banana out of it. Oh, and then because when think of a smoothie, okay, when you're in a smoothie shop, you can have that just that smell mm -hmm. where you can kind of smell the fruit and ice, like sherbets and things potentially. I always smell banana. Even if I, I never get banana in my drink. I once bought banana chips and was disappointed they had no flavor. And remember, <laughs> you were like, you fool. <laughs> no one gets that for flavor. They do it to fill it. That's right. Fill the gut. <sighs> Whatever. Well, anyway, you're right. I think that there's definitely like tropic undertones here. Um, I am not getting malt. Definitely vanilla. <clears throat> and the waxiness, it's not just a feeling. I actually can taste when you lick a lot of candles. I think you can, when you smell a candle that's maybe even put mm -hmm. out or you can smell candles. Mm -hmm. Like, let's face it. And you can feel candles or hot wax. Let's not bring up your nipples, Noah. I know what you do. <laughs> he has to tape them when we go out legal i have no idea why sidebar edit that out that's gonna be left in <laughs> definitely i'm sure someone will get a laugh out of it <laughs> not talking about wax on the nipples or anything what movie is that from weird, weird science, science. Uh, that's right she was hot back then Kelly LeBrock. Oh, yeah, when she was married to Steven Seagal. <laughs> All right, let's try. You want to try the Dalweeny? I do. I'm mm. definitely getting kind of a sweet taste on this now that's kind of opened up a little bit more. How stark, Dalweeny. This is the 43%. Both of these from the Highlands, by the way. Dalweeny, however, has the highest stills in. All of Scotland. Coldest? Highest? Highest and coldest. Just uh, the reason that it won, I'm sure, the mark of winter is coming. Every walrus loves a tight seal. Glug, 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 glug. Glug, glug. Thank you. Glasses are sweet. <laughs> look, look. Can you really helicopter look, look. in the square, though? I don't think you can. Well, you're doing it wrong. I think uh, this is not helicoptering, it's wishing. Maybe. Swishing. Or flip flopping. Mm. Swaying. It's how you use your centrifugal force. This is how our table was. <laughs> Square, <laughs> yet. <laughs> yet, <Yeah>, but. It <laughs> Check that out. It's like a wave master. Mm. Once you get in the flow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. This seems like it's darker already. Definitely. Yeah, it has more of an amber color to it. Um, 
And then, honestly, it seems. I think I could get a little bit more peat in this smell. Mm -hmm. Or a little bit of smoke, maybe. Because oh. it has like that. It's not like the. Um, like Lagavulin or anything like that. Or like mm. the Talisker. But there is like that slight hint of the Band-Aid. There you go. Very, 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 very slight though. Band-Aid is in It's Good For You. It keeps COVID-19 away. Hence the reason. Which is like a very mild like wet leather. COVID-19 is not like a mild wet leather. But the scotch is. <laughs> <laughs> it's like someone slapping me with a wet leather glove. Hmm. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> what did you make that song? It wasn't me. <laughs> I do. Ooh. This scotch pretty good. What's the, the what's the, the music? What's the tune going now with this scotch? It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> Smooth operator. Smooth operator. No. No? It's a nice day for a white wedding. No? No. All right. No Billy Idol. Maybe Alien Ant Farm. Sing mm. the song, man. Sing the song. The Smooth Criminal. All right. It's like Michael Jackson's only. But better. Like a rock version. Dude, I don't know. Dun -dun 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 -dun. Michael Jackson's is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we got Smooth Criminal, Alien Ant Farm versus what's the music for the Klein Leash? I'm going to go with Sober. <laughs> Billy Eilish or what? <laughs> no, Tool. Oh. Uh, or maybe it's not sober, which is which is the one like I know the pieces fit because I watched them tumble down. Do you guys not know Tool? Do you, do you well, know Tool? I know Tool. But he didn't say, "Did you know a Tool?" He said, "Do you know the oh, band Tool?" <laughs> my bad. <laughs> Ota. I'm gonna go with Wild Side. Molly Crew. Wild Side? Yeah. Is that the one where they say, like, take a walk down the wild take side? Take a walk down the wild side. Mm. That's not the song I was thinking of. You were thinking of the one that's, like, from the 60s. Was Which I? is not Molly Crew, then. No. <laughs> <laughs> take a walk on the wild side. I said, hey, girl. Yeah. Oh, take a walk, walk on, on the wild, wild side. side. That works, too. And the color girls go... Yeah, that song. Yeah. Okay, so we got Wild Side and Smooth Criminal Alien Ant Farm. All right. I'm going Smooth Criminal. Shoo. <laughs> well, the yeah. third week into our venture into the Game of Thrones scotches. And once again, looks like it's an easy vote. For the same for three, Dal Winnie. Takes Wait, are you, what are you? What are you voting for? No, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you're wrong. Nope, you're wrong. <laughs> are you sure you're gonna vote that way? I don't know. Last time I had more time to vote, so I. I All right, it's then. then it's finish, finish and if wait. If you're gonna make me like flash no, vote right now, no. you got time because the Klein Leash has had its extra five minutes to sit out. We're giving it some time. Is anyone ready to speak to their sigil? Smart Galactus. I want an elephant. Do, 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 do. And I know my Latin. Do. And I would like a little person riding my elephant. But I feel like that just makes it look like a littler person because a person already looks little compared to an elephant. Now, if it's like my bodyguard, little big, whole different story. 
That guy should be riding an elephant like he was a surfboard. Well. <laughs> All right. So uh, which Adam Sandler movie are you saying? Mine's from Happy Gilmore. Happy Gilmore. All right. All right. He wears a cowboy hat. The little guy. Yeah, and he rides around on the on the stick horse. Yeah, and he pours beer. And he's like basically his happy place. That's a pretty good sigil. So you have a great big slow, nearly extinct animal with a little person riding him, throwing beer all over the place. Somebody always messes up and has their alarm. Their And what was your Latin? My Latin quad era demonstratum QED. Sounds like a disease. <laughs> <laughs> it does. <laughs> well, it translates uh, to which was to be demonstrated. erectile dysfunction. But basically, <laughs> it references when you logically prove something. And I think here in Scotch Hour... The conversation isn't about opinions in the sense of how it's going to impact the people that listen and if they're going to like us or not, or if they're going to appreciate what you have to say. It's about, this is what I experienced. Here is why. And this is the logical conclusion based on that. Now, can that be funny? Can that be fact-filled? Can that possibly differ with other people's experiences? Possibly. But I don't think that we're coming in here and communicating anything less than exactly what was experienced. And I would like to think that anyone who's listening, you know, appreciates that. Logic-based, not, you know, the guy looked funny and so my food was terrible. <laughs> like, I mean, that could happen. Well, it could, but, yeah, I think we put a little more meat and potatoes to it, and I think that that's actually a good value. All right, I just looked up my Adam Sandler movie. All right, I think I got mine. Do it, Noah, do it. Do it, Noah, do it. Okay, so my animal and uh, my Adam Sandler movie coincide together because the animal is an alligator. I don't think that's how, I don't know how that's a little person. I'm really no, lost. No, mine was a little person. Oh. Is, oh, okay. So mine is also from Happy Gilmore. Okay. And the alligator ate uh, Stubbs' hand. Okay. Okay. So. so if you think about this, right, just think, think about Game of Thrones <laughs> and think about how there is, uh, there is a <laughs> Lannister who has a missing hand, right? He had a golden hand. That's Jamie Lannister. In the movie uh, Happy Gilmore, the alligator eats Stubbs' hand, and he has, like, a wooden hand. So we got a little bit of, like, uh, a cross over there a little bit for this so on my sigil. Factor. And my my uh, my Latin, Carpe Vendum, which is seize the wine. Yes. I drink, and I know things. <laughs> Mic drop. All right, so we got alligator. Alligator. From Happy Gilmore. Yeah, it also includes the animal. So I meet two things right there. I chose an elephant because an elephant never forgets. And I feel like that's really representative of ultimately the the Starks, to be honest. And like that perseverance component. So right. so my, my my sigil actually really relates very closely to the Lannisters because you have Carpe Venom, which is seize the wine. You have the alligator who try, who uh, cuts off somebody's hand, which kind of relates to Jamie Lan Lannister. So the motto relates to Tyron Lannister. The alligator relates to Jamie, Jamie Lannister. And the alligator meets your requirement of an animal and my requirement of an Adam's, uh, Adam Sandler movie. All right. Boom. This is probably not going to take as long as we thought because we're only at 36 minutes. <laughs> hey, man. Sometimes quick and dirty is exactly what is needed. Down and dirty. That's right. Rolling in the mud. All right. For me. For you. 
Dum, dum, dum. I'm really torn with this animal. But I'm going to go with the timber wolf. Timber wolf. Timber wolf. Yeah. The second place would have been the Bengal tiger. Ah, but with the timber wolf, I think this is an animal that has the potential to be part of a pack, to stay close to its family uh, or community, as I will take it, and also contribute, but not go around menacing others without reason. Tempest Fugit, time flies, make the most of it. Absolutely, my Latin. Enjoy your time. Enjoy your day. Seize the day is good, too. I actually thought that's the one you were going to go for. And then for me, the Adam Sandler movie, I can't believe you guys didn't pick this one, Zohan. So how are you going to tie <laughs> Zohan into your sigil? Because like, my sigil is like an alligator, but a very poorly drawn one. So it's Carpe Venom. Because the guy terminates anything he wants to. Is it going to be a like... badass. So how are you drawing that on your sigil, man? He's flying out of the water, turning into a wolf and flying as he does it. That's right. So I thought like about a, this yeah, like a for guy. 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah, like a guy, like a shadow guy. <laughs> shadow guy? No, Zohan. Like when he swims, he like flies. Hers, hers I can <sighs> see. Hers I can see like a, like a midget riding an elephant or something like that. Didn't you see Zohan fly out of the water? No. I do Ooh. not see. I don't see how you're going to get like a Timberwolf and Zohan in, in your sigil here. Because he's part of a pack, but he's also a lone wolf. Nobody knows what that means. It's so provocative. <laughs> Agent provocateur. Do you know, you know what that movie's from? Do you know what I'm quoting there? Everybody does. Yeah. Uh, Nobody knows what it means. Nobody does. Nobody knows what it means. Nobody does. Anchorman? <gasps> no, but it is a, one of his movies. Will Ferrell? Yeah, it is a Will Ferrell movie. It's like the Blades of Fire or something Blades like that. Blades of Glory. Blades of Glory, there you go. <laughs> Nobody knows what that means. It's provocative. it's provocative. I'm sticking with it. Zohan, Tempest Fugit. Okay. Timber Wolf. All right, so we got uh, we got plenty of time here left over to talk about some other stuff here. So do we want to do a round two of sigils or what? Or do you want to talk something about else, something else? No way. I think we should talk about books and movies. Okay, we can we can wrap Dude, that one. That's in. actually pretty good because then Jesse, that opens you brought up that, next yeah. week to whatever we want. Just the two of actually, us. Actually, next we week can't though, make it if we try, just the two of us. Next week, uh, yeah. honestly, you and I. Sure, that works. <laughs> uh, I think we have to do our five minute shorts next week. Oh, snap. And answer and do the mailbag stuff. Yeah. By the way, mine's five minute long. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what to say that, but uh, okay. That's why he uses big towels. That's who who wants that. to? <laughs> he wants to start off with uh, books into movies or books into TV shows. <laughs> yeah, the Klein leash is not a victor. Mm, how stark! I get a little. Ned Stark. You just really like that band aid. You like actually band-aid. I've been hurt a lot as a kid, so the band aid smell brought me comfort as my mother covered my wounds with it. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty Weirdo. bird. Pretty yeah. bird. That bird was fine, by the way. They did nothing wrong. Way to go, guys. <laughs> All right, so uh, your dead bird to it. Do you want to do kid. book to movie? Yeah, movie book to, to book? movie. All right, All right well, so, get it. Oh, me first. Well, man, this is a tough one because we've already talked about some of my favorites: The Great Gatsby, Great Expectations. You liked the movie? I liked yes, both very much so. But I'm gonna go straight up. You're gonna say Romeo and Juliet. No, we've talked about that one too. So oh, much. yeah, we did. We did talk. That about was a those. great one. That is actually one of the greatest adaptations in my mind. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, freaking Claire Danes. Um, I did like that movie a lot. So <clears throat> well done. I, but I won't go there. Um, I would say that is one of my favorite adaptations of that. Yeah, very good. Love it. Love love the love the uh, the guns being the swords and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, pistols being daggers and. 
I'm actually going to go and go from the comic book, Batman versus Superman, to the movie, Batman versus Superman, and I loved it. Uh, I know a lot of individuals mm. did not care for Ben Affleck's representation of the Dark Knight at this point, or um, the battle in that movie. I don't think anyone had any problems with any of the other actors or actresses. Um, but honestly, I thought they all did an amazing job and I thought the film was done well. Batman was dark at that point. He was absolutely branding criminals. He was doing all the things a vigilante would do because he was beyond believing in the law. And he had been impacted so greatly, not just by his parents' death at this point, but by the negative impacts on his whole community that he was like, I'm done with this. You guys will stop. You guys will be punished, even if that means I'm the one dropping you off a bridge. And not that he does that in the movie, but in the comic books he did. But in the movie, you, I had no doubt he was completely capable of it. And I loved it. I thought it was amazing. That That is a great one because I thought um, out of all the DC or DCU or, you know, uh, the universe there that they were trying that they're, they're trying to create or trying to remake because they felt uh, that uh, Superman versus uh, Batman versus Superman was too dark. I didn't think it was dark enough. I, I thought it was. I had loved it. Yeah, I thought it was appropriate. Um, a close second to me would be Bram Stoker's Dracula, and I thought that was also extremely well done with Gary Oldman. Yeah. Great job, Keanu, Keanu Reeves. Reeves. And uh, man, oh, such a good movie. Um, I, I loved it. It was amazing. And again, though, this is in that same genre of film where it's kind of dark and it's kind of real in the sense that this is more human than the BS movies that more were transferred. Human than you. Yeah, yeah, which isn't real. Like as a human, you go through loss and you want revenge. You yeah. want to do things. And when you go through a loss of time, much like Dracula, Count Dracula himself, and then you're affronted by a beauty you haven't seen for a century, yeah, you're absolutely going to do whatever you can to get back in those pants. What do you do? All I'm thinking about is how old that lady was on the Titanic. Dude, I'm not trying to get <laughs> in anyone's pants 100 years later. I don't Hood. think she was a vampire. No, she wasn't. Oh, That's okay. Too bad. I see what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. Like, I don't think might, anyone's trying to get in any like, 100 year old lady's I'll, pants. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be your familiar if I can live forever. <laughs> <laughs> Although vampires, they can be pretty, very old and still look pretty good. Yeah, pretty virile. <laughs> All right. Uh, do you want me to go next or do you want to go next? Sure. Or I can. It doesn't matter. Uh, I'll go. Okay. I feel like you have something really good. I don't. Final but countdown. Do, 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 do. I actually have a ton of these do, 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 for different do, do. reasons. The the show, Good Omens. Seen it? Never. Saw part of it. I did not finish it. I have not read the book. But See, the book I thought was excellent. And I thought the show did a good job. Neil Gaiman. Neil Gaiman. And I thought the show did a good job of representing some of those more fantastical moments. Because you're talking about the devil and hell. I mean, angels. Mm -hmm. And also bringing the comedy in. I thought they did a good job with it. Which is my segue to Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Ooh. Oh, you talk, are you talking about like the newer one that came out like probably like five, six, seven years ago, so whatever it was? The newer one. Yeah. Um, and the book, of course, I mean, I read that book probably five times a year just because I can. It's fine. The movie, though, I thought this most recent one, there are some components, certainly with mice and like the world being oh, destroyed and coming back scene. and things like that, where when you're reading it, it's it's... It's like, fine, I, I read it and I get what you're saying, but when you watch the movie, it was actually easier for me to to visualize it and to absorb it a little bit. Okay. Which I didn't think would really be possible because I've read that book for years, right? Um, can we just all take a moment and talk about Stephen King? Sure. Misery, great. Most of the others. Oh, actually, that's not true. Book Christine. to movie. Book to movie. Christine was good, great. What about It. This Ooh, is the deal breaker. Dude. Mm. Book to movie. I will say. 
I like the newer versions. The newer version of it was amazing. I haven't seen the newer version. It was amazing. It put the first version to shame. I watched it with my kids and uh and no, actually the four of us. Oh no. No, this one is a very different movie. <laughs> yeah, this this is a very good one. It's, it was I never so saw it. well done. So I'm yeah. talking about the one that's like The older one was good, it was not great. This new one in my opinion was great. Compared to the book? I've never read the book, so I can't compare it to the book. See, the ending in the book and the ending in the movie. I, this second version not the same. is more like the book. I don't want to ruin it for you. But okay. I thought it was great. I was so pleasantly I surprised. <laughs> I actually talked to Noah about it for weeks. Yeah. So then I'm walking away with a smarter challenge to go and watch it. But you know, you, <laughs> what you got pants. is Christine, great. Just, Gary, great. Just realize if you're watching the new version of it, it's two, it's two, uh, two parts. Yeah, it's like you're almost four hours. Yeah, you're talking about four hours. <laughs> what? <laughs> worth it. It is definitely worth it, but it, it is too. It's that's like a long one. Uh, that's what. That's she what said. she said. All right. Um, Hence the big towels. Okay. Well, so Stephen King, I just wanted to kind of put the lid on that jar because that was always a disappointment to me. I actually preferred reading the books in my youth than the movies. I know, like, the Dark Tower was crap. Yeah, like, I just, I never felt like they gave justice to the feelings that were evoked in reading his books. Fear, even sex, and, like, intimate scenes where in the book I was like, holy shit, this this is some, this is some craziness. In the show it was always like, meh. Well, that's because so you did you a- like the uh, newer <laughs> Pet Cemetery? Compared I haven't to- seen the newer Pet Cemetery. That was for different I think reasons. the original Pet Cemetery was actually better in that case. And the new one was good, but I thought the original was I better. actually liked the newer one more all the way up to the end mm. where that stupid cat does like its little... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I I didn't go and see the newer Pet Cemetery because to me I thought the uh, what original I'm calling the was original well was I thought it was solid. Scared me as far as the book to to movie ratio. I thought we were on on point with that and then that poor little kid. <sighs> How about The Shining? What do you think about The Shining? Amazing. I didn't yeah, wasn't there a new one of those? There was a new one. I never seen the new one. It's not a newer Shining. It is the next volume. No, there was a new. There was a remake of The Shining. Was there? Yes. I thought it was the follow up to Doctor Death. So your expression right there explains that the the, the newer version of The Shining. Really, there was one. Oh, so it was not great. No, not but the, well, how was the second one? Oh, you talking about the uh, Doctor Sleep? Yeah, that was actually pretty good. That looked great. I never saw it. You never saw it. I'm um, all in on the original. So we know what we're doing for Halloween. We're wa- watching a bunch of movies and drinking a bunch of scotch. Well, Maybe for, we'll do a live As show. you already know, I think I already talked to you about this. Like my, my whole thing is every October, I have to watch uh, a horror movie. Or if I can't get in a full two-hour movie, then I'll do like a horror show, like American Horror Story, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Every, day, every day of the month. How about oh, what wow. we do in the shadows? <laughs> that that counts. It's, yeah. it, it falls in the horror count, uh, genre. That's what I'm talking about. I love I'm that show. Oh man, you, you're you're behind a couple episodes. That know, show's awesome. I know. I know. I actually am too. But I love that show. I've been watching uh, only murders in the building. I've not seen that. Well, if we get someone, one of these neighbors to kill somebody in the neighborhood, we can do only na- only a murders podcast. in the neighborhood. <laughs> Um, last but not least, I was also considering Sherlock Holmes because, you know, you consider the 19th century, the turn of the century. So 1887 to let's say 1910. Okay. Sherlock Holmes comes out and this is the advent of even being able to recognize the difference between a blood spill. As written by Sir Conan Doyle. Maybe not blood type yet, Mm -hmm. but science is really coming about it's making it about face and people are starting to get interested etc and then you have the whole benedict cumberbatch bbc version and never then, seen it well partially and you also have the one the Brian version <laughs> with iron man robert downey jr. robert downey jr and i thought he did a fantastic job they both did actually the difference is yeah I'm sorry for the interruption, but yeah, they both did great jobs. And I'm not saying that the books are bad, but I will tell you that I think it's advantageous that we're in the 20th century, being able to have these murder mysteries 
no different than Poirot and Agatha Christie, you can still take a story that's about a train and some what we would consider old timey um, environments. But the fact that we know what we do right now and we're looking in through that lens, you know, we've got a man on the moon and all these technologies. That's a good call with Murder on the Orient Express in particular. That movie was one that, uh, you know, book two movie 10 out of 10. I don't know that you could have beat it. It was so well done. Um, and just everything I learned about the character Perot in particular between that and other, the TV show, uh, was actually mind blowing. It was very mm -hmm. impressive from someone who I thought is like a child writer, Agatha Christie. <laughs> Little did don't I tell know. her that. Yeah. The priest was not, wait, I don't want to ruin it for anyone. <laughs> so I, I think that there's something to be said for, you know, don't screw it up. If you're going to take a book and make it into something visual, dude, do it right. Or just don't. I think right. that's part of the struggle is when it is a book and it, you know, Hamlet being an example, Romeo and Juliet, it can be interpreted in a very actual sense, but also in so many different variable senses as it was written so long ago. And when you start to interpret it, especially as a younger reader, you have a lot of creativity and that's the beautiful piece of it is this ability to uh, read and enjoy Romeo and Juliet and get your own version of it. And when I was a freshman in high school, my father spent an entire weekend reviewing Romeo and Juliet with me for my English class. And because of that, I think I really got a greater appreciation for Leonardo DiCaprio, Claire Danes, this version of Romeo and Juliet, because I, I at a youthful age could relate and it was just amazing. And you know, that, that's my shout out, dad, I will never forget you spending your entire weekend with me uh, studying Romeo and Juliet, uh, getting to know what the very term to know a woman means was uh, very, uh, you know, you know, oh as, fun, as fun as, a, as a, a freshman in high school as you're sharing this with me. I will never forget it, though. I, I will n always appreciate all the hours you gave me in one weekend, uh, a weekend that will last a lifetime with me. All right. Also the Grinch. Dr. Seuss. <laughs> I'm going to lighten it up. <laughs> Dr. Seuss I, in the house. I was going to go with American Gods. Yes, I have the signed edition up in my room. Probably American Gods. Uh, <laughs> even though they, it's like gone into multiple seasons, there's really only one one book. I mean, he's kind of written some other books that are kind of spinoffs, but the uh, there is a whole lot that you can actually dive, uh, dive into or go or explore with American Gods. And I think... Um, even though like the book is actually like just kind of like basically one novel, um, I think they did a really good job of like kind of translating it into a TV show and then expanding on it, which I really liked. And the whole concept of American Gods is, is actually kind of cool. It is cool. But, you know, let's take a step back and think about when we were watching, I believe it was season three, episode one. And we learned that that building that they go and visit is real. The little hotel that's out in the middle of nowhere oh, yeah, that yeah, they yeah. keep adding on to. And I can't remember what it's called right now. What do they call that oh, place? Oh, I forget the name of that place. But yeah, that, that is a real place. Do you know about this place? I only saw season one. Uh, it's like in the beginning of season three. I've read the book. Are you talking about the hotel? The like. Americana or whatever that the guy stays in when it's no. So there's this giant hotel. Is it in the book? No, I don't think it's in the book. I think this is probably oh. where they expanded center upon. of America. Something like that. I think is, was it wasn't in Ohio or Indiana, Kansas, Kansas. I, that they, is in the book, but it's not described as some like, no, they, I think they go somewhere else in the book. Cause they, they show go to that a motel America in the book. Oh, motel America. Yeah. And that's actually in the first season. I think. Right. And that actually did, I feel it stayed pretty true to the book. Yeah. I thought the first season did fairly well. And then, but you know, it didn't cover everything. And some of the things that it didn't cover in the first season, they've kind of picked up in the second, third seasons. Um, as far as like another TV series I've liked so far that I've, that I've read the, the books from has been the expanse. It started on the uh, sci-fi channel and then it moved over to, um, Prime, hmm. 
Amazon Prime. So it, like that book actually it starts out like there's um there's Earth and then there's a colony on Mars and then in the uh in uh, where the asteroid belt is um there's uh colonies on the asteroid belts. So basically uh Earth has become kind of like an old neighborhood if you will. Mm. And uh the UN runs everything there on Earth. And we have like a bunch of ships, but they're kind of older ships and stuff like that. And uh, there's a lot of people who are like unemployed and suffering on on there. Mar then the colonists that move to Mars, um, they've developed, but they become like super scientific. They're very like technical technical uh, tech technologically. Thank you. I can't. I don't know why I couldn't say, it, but I, yeah, yes, that word uh, advanced. And then, um, but they're like. Very uh, mil uh, military, mm -hmm. mi materialistic, uh, no, not militant, mater militant, yes. Uh, and uh, then the belters are kind of like the slave people because they they are they're like the miners and stuff like that, and they mm -hmm. like they're the ones who are like basically the grunts, and nobody respects them. And then there's this alien technology that comes in, and then it opens up these kind of like, I don't know, like maybe like stargates, if you will. That allows them to go into like other universes and stuff. So it was a book, or it, was it a series of books? It's a series of books. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, there's like I don't know. I want to say like there's like at least nine or ten of them. And so it's, it's a pretty good show. I I watched the show first, and then I then I went back and read some of the books. Hmm. Because. Dude. Dude. I forgot one of mine. Okay. Fletch. That was a book? It's it was. a series. It's a series. I didn't know that. Dude, it's actually. They're great. <laughs> I'm reading them. I'm almost done with the entire set. Really? Sorry. No, that's fine. I don't know how I dropped the ball on that one. Chevy Chase, right? Yeah. Which. Let's take a step back. Fletch is not, not a bad one. But let's go back to Sherlock Holmes, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, and the many versions that he's had. I think we can exclude, at least for our generations, the versions that were pre-Robert Downey Jr. and uh, pre-Cumberbatch. Which of those two is the better version and why? Well, Noah hasn't seen him. He's seen... At least Robert Downey Jr. What did you think of the Robert Downey Jr. versions of Sherlock Holmes? They're entertaining. See, what I actually think, and I think this is why I enjoyed the Cumberbatch versions more, and I agree with you. I almost think the Robert Downey Jr. versions are, in a way, more entertaining. They're fluid. They cover a lot more ground time and experience in the two hours versus the hour and a half per show per season um, in Cumberbatch's version. But the Cumberbatch version, to me, explains the science more of biology, chemistry, and psychology. I'll take your word on it. Never watch the show. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I thought that the Cumberbatch version was best, but it was because I thought you got Sherlock Holmes raw. Yeah, that's I agree with that. Whereas <clears throat> in the movie with Robert Downey Jr., he still had that who was a girl that he had the whole What's her and the actress? Come on. <clears throat> the actress? In the movie. I don't know, I'm sure we can look it up. Moriarty. She's like a thief and then she dies in the second one. Come on. I don't. Uh, I can't remember the actress's name. I can't either. But anyway, I think you're talking about Irene Adler, right? Is the character's name? But I don't. But I don't anyway, I can't name. remember. I sh that's bad. Whereas Benedict Cumberbatch, when he was playing Sherlock, even though he had the woman, I still felt like he was him, and. It was never going to go anywhere further than that. Whereas I felt in the movie with Robert Downey Jr., there was more sexual tension. Tension and Rachel prowess. McAdams. That's it. Hallelujah. Ask the Google and you shall receive. 
Anyways, her so. best role is in Wedding Crashers. Let's face it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. I, I didn't. Well, that's all. Another book to movie that I liked was Starship Troopers. All right. That was a book. Yeah, it's a short. Okay. Hmm. I remember sitting on a couch with you trying to drink a sip of a drink every time someone died in that movie during a certain event. <laughs> yes. And the next morning came way too quickly. <laughs> What's the show with what the you chainsaw ended up guy? With was three guys, four guys out in front in overcoats in like 80 degree weather on a, on a spring night smoking cigars. <laughs> I'm not saying anyone was underage, but maybe someone was underage and drinking. God knows what, man. We did not have earmuffs, Noah. We did not have refined palates back then. <laughs> but that was a pretty good show, man. It was just like you, you start the movie. Every time someone dies, you have to take a drink, and you just drink until you pass out. <laughs> Another movie that we did that with in high school was, uh, or not high school, but in uh, college, is um, Hard Boiled. Oh, awesome movie. What movie is that? Oh, my God. It's one of the, my, actually, it's like in my top 25 movies. No one I've been trying to find the copy. This it's, a, it's a Chow Young Fat movie. <laughs> yes. And he's like this. Uh, Assassin. Is he the assassin or is he the cop? I can't remember which one he he's is. He's actually the cop. But he's, yeah, we don't want to ruin it for you. It doesn't sound like. You can ruin it any more than, yeah. Basically, you're supposed to take a drink every time someone dies in that one, too. And uh, let's just say you'll probably be done within about 20 minutes yeah. at most. Like Nonstop Robocop. mayhem. I'm out. Yeah, you're going to start tapping out. Tap like, me. Come like, take over. Like, literally, in the first 15 <laughs> minutes, so like, there's like 50 people that die. You're like, just from being shot, you're like, okay, this is over. <laughs> yeah. Bottles empty, guys. <laughs> I can I just interject that as yeah. time goes on, this isn't. I'm not warming up to your band aid oh, syrup. Oh, the Starks don't do it for you, huh? You like the flower, not the dire wolf. <sighs> as you put yourself some more of the flower. Hey, man, I gotta compare. <laughs> the flower's gone down. <laughs> He's he's like yeah. The dude. flower has gone down. This is the one that will not be. How do you gone. know it's gone down? We haven't even voted yet. It does have an amazing floral scent when you first pour it. After you let it sit there for fifteen minutes, that goes away, and all you get is the burn of alcohol. Can I have some ice? I I am I am appreciating the the um, Klein leash more than not. Can uh, just a little bit of more of the Klein leash and an Klein ice cube. Leaf. Leash. And an ice cube. And an ice cube. Oh. That's good. Mm. Oh, did I just mix them up? I think I did. No. No? You're right. I was right? Okay. That's all that's left of Darth Vader. Talking that, about Star I think Wars. That 53 proof or whatever. I think it's Bingo bingo. Really? That's all there's left of ice cubes? Here. Dude, she melted. Darth Vader. That's little. okay. Um talking about Star Wars and anime. Star Maybe. Wars has like this new sh this new series called the uh, Star Wars Visions. Where they have like this like they do anime meets Star Wars type of thing. It's pretty cool. Is pretty kick ass. Like, I got a vision of Princess Leia. I think I saw 18. that. That's on Disney. <laughs> it's on Disney Plus. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's really cool because like you get like these like uh, Rogan uh, those uh, 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 these samurais. They just go walk into like these old like Japanese type towns and stuff like that. And uh, they like instead of having like the samurai swords, their samurai swords are like uh, lightsabers. We could have a competition going. Uh, for best Star Wars costume. And uh, anyone who's been on the show can participate should they choose, including Utah. And who's on who's our show? Utah. From? Yeah. Is it Bob? 
What about talking Bob? About, what about Bob? <laughs> talking about Ben? Yes, he's in California. Ben. I thought he was in Utah. Yeah, he's in California. Oh, what about Ben? All right, Bob's in Utah, Ben's in California. So what about Ben? Like, So he can participate, send in a pick. We got to know it's you. So mm, I will say this, the client-ish. Uh, client at, the, was, at the front? No. Uh, when you put the ice or just a little bit of water in there. Yeah, it's the water. It is so good. It, it has a really great uh, vanilla flavor to Stark's it. Stark's going down. Season one, episode nine. The end of a king and a hand. What do you think about this one? The ice. I didn't get ice in this one. That's the oh. Dalweenie, bro. Oh. What do you think of that one, the ice? I'm, I was already appreciating this. And of course, my only other... Damn, I've been drinking the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> what did we drink when I... It was very uh, apple. That was the Cardew. So the Cardew... I remember at one point after I had been drinking it for a while, I felt like it was like, you know, it, it hit you in the front very rapidly, and then it was like gone. Yep. And I feel like this, whatever is sticking with me, it's pleasant. It's the wax. Note to self, put candle wax in your scotch. I, well, I think we are nearing the end. It's the final countdown. countdown. All right, so. So the vote, where are you going to go? All right. Man, you guys are the ones that are torn. You, you go first, Noah. I'm still going to go with how Stark that weenie. All right, what's your vote? Klein leash. I'm going with the Klein leash. I would say though, if I'm gonna throw a cube in it or some water, I will definitely would go with the Klein the Klein leash. But if I'm doing it neat, I'm gonna go Dalwini, so I'll go Dalwini. This is important, bear with me. I'm the tiebreaker. Deal breaker. <laughs> or he just wants to drink more scotch, one of the two. <coughs> This is actually really tough. I really enjoy the floral notes of the Klein Leash. Mm -hmm. You said it was already done deal, man. Why are you like you changing your mind now? People love drama. Blind taste test. These glasses are You identical. know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> what she said. You also have a round glass and a square glass. That's literally the point of blind taste <laughs> is that the glasses are so dynamically different. I know, but you... Like, why is it warm? Because we pissed in it, Brian. <laughs> Dalwini it is. Starks will progress to the next round. Although the Klein Leash... Man, I will tell you what the, the floral notes... Makes me want to try that new Glen Morangi limited edition uh, with all the floral notes as well. I think it's an 18 year. There's something. also like vanilla. There's strong also... vanilla at the end, uh, oh. the middle to end of the body. All, all right. right. Time to end. Closures. Anything you want to say? I want to say, like, good job to Glen Fittick. You guys making this wonderful scotch bottle that looks like a coffin man you just like pull it and it turns and it closes and it's like goodbye i'll come back out tomorrow night sun's gone i'm coming back i don't know about a coffin but it does remind me of one of those doors in chicago the revolving Are they called revolving doors? <laughs> Is there a better yeah. name? No, well, that's literally what they're called. Alrighty then. I'm just saying, good job, man. Your design's flawless. So, uh, with that, had some good conversation about best and worst, which really was all pretty good. Books to movies, about what would our sigil be? Man, I'll draw it up, I'll make it happen. You guys will see.
Zohan turning into the flying wolf. As time. I can't by, believe you gave me hell about having a midget in a cowboy hat on nice top of watch. an elephant and you're going to have some flying Zohan. <laughs> That's because you take a small person versus a regular person, and put them on a giant beast, and now you've got an ant on a mountain, not an anthill. Okay, so that's what you want to leave the people with. Yeah. Size matters. Who's next? <laughs> Unless you want to do the whole final wrap-up. <laughs> you don't want to do the final wrap-up. What's up? I got... I, We're available on Podbean, on YouTube, on... Spotify? Spotify. There you go. On Rumble, on YouTube video... Don't forget to subscribe. Please make sure you donate. Become a Patreon member. So you can enjoy the After Hours show, which is a hell of a lot more entertaining than this one, but also really crude, so maybe you don't want to do that. Well, if you're done and you did that closure, have a good night, everyone. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this evening's episode of Scotch Hour. If you did, please like share and subscribe also if you have not done so already please become a patreon member with memberships starting as low as one dollar a month thank you and hopefully you have a wonderful evening